Good morning. I'm Dr. Laura Marie Torres Souter, and I'd like to share with you my testimony delivered to the Guam Legislature on December 20th, 2016. This testimony I submitted to the Committee on Higher Education, Culture, Public Libraries, and, Guam and Women's Affairs to the Guam Legislature in support of Bill Number 406-33, introduced by Speaker Wampat and Senator Tina Munya Barnes. I wholeheartedly and enthusiastically support the passage of Bill Number 406-33, an act to add a new Chapter 88 to Title V Guam Code annotated, relative to reestablishing and funding Ikumishon Ifinutsamoro, the Chamorro Language Commission. As Ikumishon Ifinutsamoro Zanifinatnagwin Historia Zanilinatla Itautautano the Commission on Chamorro Language, and the teaching of the history and culture of the indigenous people of Guam. I have long awaited for this opportunity to testify to the wisdom of legislation to reestablish and fund the now defunct Commission Ifinut Zamoro. I applaud Speaker Wampat and Senator Munya Barnes for taking the initiative to finally make this happen I appeal to all the members of the 33rd Guam Legislature and to the Governor of Guam to fully support this milestone act for the continuity of our peoplehood. There is no more significant vehicle to preserving and maintaining our identity as the indigenous people of Guam and the Northern Marianas than through ensuring that our language is protected, nourished, spoken, taught appropriately, and thereby passed down to future generations. At a time when UNESCO reports that one indigenous language is lost in the world every two weeks, we cannot count on the traditional means through which our language and culture have persisted through thousands of years of natural evolution. The global realities of the 21st century make it imperative that we purposefully, deliberately, and consciously find ways to make certain that this rich legacy is not lost or forgotten. I respectfully request the time to put this proposed piece of legislation into the context of our struggle for self-determination and sovereignty. While my heart speaks in Chamorro, I will testify in English so that all can understand the very reason why this is so important. Sadly, we have deluded ourselves into thinking that speaking tourist talk or understanding the gist of what is being said in Chamorro by those of us who still speak it is somehow good enough. But we all know deep in our hearts that it is absolutely not enough. Our cultural selves are pining for the authenticity and legitimacy experienced by speaking our language fluently and without apology. In a profoundly spiritual way, I feel that I have the responsibility to speak for the unnamed Chamorro female voices that have remained unheard in the annals of Guam's history. I know that women of the past have spoken loud and clear. It is their deafening silence in the public record that inspires me to spend the time necessary to connect this act to a movement with a story. Why now, you might ask? Because the time has come. Judy and Tina have heard the cry coming from our ancestral mother womb. Famagu onhu, hafa bidan mimizu, ni irenchen mizu, ginin hami, nui manau taumotna. Hamzu nui manyaina pagu, hafa parensegui. Mangofnya langi famagu nitano. Fan magmata paguha. Usa itiningo mizu. Iguinahan mizu. Zani fino mizu. Para minau liki tau tau tano. Pagu zanesta kimanai hinikuk naha ani siya. Sovereignty is defined as having supreme power, especially over a body politic. Freedom from external control. Self-determination is defined as the determining by the people 
of the form their government shall have, without reference to the wishes of any other nation, especially by people of a territory or a former colony. In the global political context, self-determination is the inalienable right of a people in their homeland to determine their political destiny. As the indigenous people of Guam, Chamorros have yet to exercise that right. As an advocate in the 1970s and beyond, I was part of a great political movement that clamored for Chamorro self-determination. The Organization of People for Indigenous Rights, Parapada, the Chamorro Studies Association, and other arms of the movement sought to create consciousness about our identity as Indigenous people with a collective right to determine our political and economic destiny amidst post-World War II efforts to end colonization and recognize the rightful place of island nations in the United Nations family. The decolonization, nuclear-free, and independent Pacific movement touched the shores of all of the former U.S. territories and offshore colonies. Here on Guam, young activists, myself included, rose up to join forces with the great political leaders of the post-World War II era on Guam to become the Chamorro generation. Sadly, much of the legacy of the Chamorro generation is now forgotten, romanticized, or taken for granted. That legacy which gave rise to the Chamorro cultural renaissance and the Green Revolution of the 1970s and 80s is well worth revisiting from the perspective of those who led and experienced it firsthand. We clearly defined and articulated who we were to the powers of the world and ushered in a revolution of thought and acted boldly to put ourselves on the indigenous world map. We would not be denied. Young intellectuals like Robert Underwood, Hope Cristobal, Bennett Dunca, B.J. Cruz, Chris Paris Howard, Ron Rivera, Rosa Palomo, Marilyn Manibusan, Ron Tihan, Tony Leon Guerrero, Tony Artero, and myself, among many others, were returning home from college or starting their careers eager to engage and hungry to matter. We were hell-bent on making sense of the contradictions in our tortured historical experience as colonized people. Influential voices, among them Samuel Betances, who's now my husband, empowered our intellectual discourse with such ideas as the social reconstruction of reality and the inalienable right of a people to self-determination. We wrote articles, published the book Idiretsun Itautau, Chamo Self-Determination, raised consciousness in village meetings throughout the island, testified in congressional hearings and at the United Nations, sought allies with other nation states, and advocated unrelentingly for political self-determination for Chamorros. We fought alongside seasoned political leaders such as Richard Titano, Ricky and Paul Berdalio, Rudy Sablan, Carl Gutierrez, Joe Ada, Chilang Bamba, Catherine Uggen, Pilar Lujan, and others. We gave voice to the hopes, political aspirations, frustrations, angers, and dreams of our people. During that period, delegates were convened to draft a constitution for Guam. We must keep in mind that while a constitution is the mechanism by which a nation state develops the tools for governing itself, we at that moment in history went through the motion, but were under no illusion. The so-called constitution with a small c would not significantly alter the colonial relationship between Guam and the U.S. We were not engaged in exercising authentic self-determination. Thus, the effort to ratify the document, which emerged, was soundly defeated by voters across political, generational, religious, and class lines. UN observers witnessed the outcome of this vote. Guam, unlike Puerto Rico, would not be seduced or bullied into accepting the tools of colonialism disguised as self-determination. Young and old, Democrats and Republicans, 
rallied together to protest and petition the U.S. Congress to deliver on its promise. Politicians were held accountable for their rhetoric. The Commission on Self-Determination, which still exists, if renamed and somewhat more somber, was established by law to facilitate the process. The tragedy is that if we do not take steps to maintain our language and heritage as the people of this land, winning these battles would have been in vain. A Chamorro Language Commission was also established to facilitate the transition from orality to literacy. An official Chamorro orthography, rife with controversy to this day, established the standard for written Chamorro. The Chamorro Language and Culture Program at DOE was instituted. Chamorro was recognized as one of the two official languages of Guam. The Guam Hymn, written in English in 1919 by Dr. Ramon M. Sablan, was translated into Chamorro by Mainina, Lagrimas Leon Guerrero Antalan, in 1974. The Guam March, composed by my tata Jose Martinez Torres, was made official. Chamorro Monuments, Kepuha, Two Lovers, Gadao, Sirena, commemorating legendary figures, were erected. We demanded retribution for the careless destruction of sacred ancient burial sites. We grew in consciousness about the importance and significance of protecting traditional cultural properties. The Office of Historic Preservation, the Chamorro Land Trust, and Ancestral Land Claims Commission also came into being. Lawmakers created institutions, policies, and programs that would be charged with the preservation and maintenance of our language our natural and historic resources, and cultural heritage. There was truly a sense of nation building which fueled the imagination and unleashed indigenous creativity, which is evident in film, art, music, song, poetry, prose, and dance. These continue to flourish today with the flurry of excitement surrounding our hosting of the 12th FESPAC celebration this year a resurgence of interest in indigenous forms of expression, books, films, and other creative projects continue to provide a wellspring of assets to fortify our quest to remain connected with our ancestors and our identity as an indigenous people. And that is all good. The real question is, is it enough to sustain us and nourish our understanding of who we really are and where we want to go from here. Never have I been more acutely aware than now of the need to revisit the concepts of sovereignty and self-determination, not from the global perspective of freedom from external control or the right to determine political destiny with those from whom we seek justice beyond our borders, but from the internal perspective of what goes on within our island borders and collective psyche as indigenous people of the Marianas. In this context, sovereignty means personal autonomy and self-determination means determination by oneself without outside influence, freedom to live as one chooses or to act or decide. How are we exercising personal sovereignty and language and cultural self-determination. It is time to direct the hard questions to ourselves. What are we as an island nation doing to strengthen the spirit and growth of our people with our language and cultural ways of knowing and being? How do we treat our bodies, our psyches, and each other so that drug and alcohol addiction, domestic and child abuse, violence, incarceration, and other social pathologies do not define who we are? How do we educate ourselves so that we can truly bridge the island global divide while preserving a proud sense of where we came from and where we want to go as a people? How should we partner and collaborate with our Micronesian neighbors in the region to protect our natural resources and develop a sustainable economy 
that maintains our fragile ecosystem? These are the types of questions that must inform our discourse of sovereignty and self-determination from within. Let's begin with what it means to be Tautautanu, or people of the land. Our identity and survival as an indigenous people is tied to this homeland that our ancestors inhabited over 4,000 years ago. To be sure, we are the bloodline descendants of the ancient inhabitants of the Marianas Archipelago and its subsequent settlers. Notwithstanding this birthright, without land, we cannot be people of the land. I refer to the breaking up of clans, the commodification of land as personally owned property, and the subsequent whole-scale alienation of landowners from their lands after the war, a situation that continues to fester and cause generations of family members to pass away without just restitution or return of their ancestral lands. These injustices must be rectified without further delay. The other side of this equation is that without people, the land has no meaning other than as real estate. There are more Chamorros living outside of Guam in 2016 than within our borders. The continuous economic diaspora of Chamorros has scattered families throughout the globe. We are a shrinking majority in the only place on earth we call our homeland. In the not too distant future, Chamorros may well become a disenfranchised minority on Guam. Language is the umbilical cord of culture. Our cultural ethos as an indigenous people is encoded in our spoken language. In the past, our orality was key to passing cultural knowledge and customs through a rich and powerful storytelling and apprenticeship tradition. As citizens of the 21st century, we cannot survive the cultural hegemony of westernization, colonization, globalization, and technology without a bold concerted attempt to teach our children about the Chamorro universe in all of its splendor in our homes, our places of work and worship, and in our schools. Here again, we are going through the motions. We say teaching Chamorro is important, but how can we ensure the continuity of our language by relegating 20 minutes a day, if that, to teaching it in our schools. If our language and culture are central to our existence and continuity as indigenous people, what can we do to prioritize culturally relevant and responsible pedagogy? Galvanize support for and properly fund Chamorro language and culture programs in Guam schools and post-secondary institutions. Is it enough to use such words as inagofli, inagwaiza, inafamoli, dinanya as slogans, or do we embrace them as principles to live by? Are the bilingual signs that appear in all government offices and public facilities decorative, or do they truly reflect our cultural treasury of place names and functions? A bold step would be for the members of the Guam legislature to resurrect and empower the now virtually defunct Chamorro Language Commission through this act. Such an official and autonomous body should be vested with the responsibility of guiding and promoting the strategic integration and practice of our language and cultural values and traditions in all venues of life in our homeland. This body needs to stand separate from any agency or program of government and must have the power and authority akin to a council of elders, or in Etnun Saina, as practiced in Chamorro clans of old. That is, an esteemed, well-respected body of Chamorro sages, young and old, who can recommend policy to island leaders, educators, lawmakers, and the community in matters relating to Chamorro language, place names, natural resources, cultural knowledge, and practices and historically significant sites and interpretations of history. This body could resolve ongoing disputes about orthography and issues of authenticity related to cultural interpretations. 
The Chamorro generation of the 70s and 80s have grown older. Many have passed away. The question is, have we become wiser? If so, how can we leverage our wisdom to ensure that our continuity of peoplehood is in good hands? How can we best exercise personal sovereignty and language and cultural self-determination? How can we conscientiously and consistently feed the hunger that plagues our younger generations and threatens our very survival? Those of us who are proponents of Chamorro self-determination must recognize that we are called to collaborate, cooperate, and put aside that which has divided us in the past. Because we have such strong convictions, we may be tempted to belittle or discount those who disagree with our positions. The raw truth is that we cannot succeed in ensuring our continuity of peoplehood if we do not overcome our differences. Albeit conflict that has been born out of disagreements, deep-seated disappointment, injury, and betrayal. We must dismantle the walls that separate us from within. We must never give impetus to the rule of divide and conquer. For how can we love Guam and spurn each other as Chamorros? If we are truly committed to ensuring the continuity of our peoplehood, we must increase our proficiency in the Chamorro language, use technology to facilitate communication with Chamorros here and abroad, we must strengthen our quest by building our knowledge of Chamorro values for healing the wounds of our fractured, colonized identity. We must continue to grow our talents for nation building through more education. We must facilitate and foster the development of indigenous literature and Chamorro scholarship. We must write about, speak about, teach and practice what we proudly associate with being Chamorro. Are you ready to be authentic nation builders? We have a chance to prove it. You have a unique opportunity to ensure that the Chamorro language and ethos will live on. Such an incredible responsibility is in your hands as government leaders. I urge you to welcome this charge with open arms and put our money where our mouth is so to speak. Re-establish the commission. Give it the autonomy and funding it deserves. Allow it to flourish with your support and you will accomplish the dream of legacy building. Sidzus Mahasir.